Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the Director of Chassis Sim Technologies. Welcome to this latest episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner. What we're going to discuss in this episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner is aero modelling in chassis sims, some tips and tricks. The motivation for this um, episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner has been some feedback I've been getting about um, the aero modelling um, uh, toolbox and really some techniques that I've been finding that have actually been making um, the aero toolbox a really, really good and powerful tool to use. So what we're going to be covering is one of the great things is that you can actually use chassis sim to create aero maps. However, it's something that's got to be done deliberately, and it's also something you've got to be quite. Uh, it's also something that you've actually got to take a pretty systematic approach to doing. So, what we're going to do in this tutorial, I'm going to break down everything that you're going to need to do to create an aero map from scratch. The testing program, uh, uh, some guidelines for the testing program that you've got to put together as well as what to do once we've actually got that data and um, what, what we need to do with that data. Now, just so that we're all on the same page here, what do we mean by an arrow map? Well, what we mean by an arrow map is that an arrow map can be broken down into two components. The first thing is the pitch sensitivity map. And so what we mean by the pitch sensitivity map, is, as we can see in this little figure here, is it's a plot of front and rear ride height versus downforce, drag, and arrow balance, or using chassis sim speak, CLA, CDA, and arrow balance. The second part of um, the uh, the second part of uh, the arrow uh, the second part of the arrow map is when we start relating various um, whole number uh, when we start ver uh, relating various whole numbers and arrow configuration in terms of overall downforce levels. If you've got those two bits, that is what we call a complete error map. And the great thing about what we're going to be doing in this episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynam Dynamics Corner today is I'm going to show you how to do both. Now, the first thing that I want to talk to you about is the error map test procedure. Now, for those of you who have uh, read my articles in Race Car Engineering, you would have seen this crop up in a number of different articles in Race Car Engineering, and they've cropped up for a good reason because this is effectively the game plan of what you go about doing when you're going through an aero test procedure. Now, obviously, this is going to vary from car to car, but the rough idea is that uh, you basically will send the car out with the nominated ride height and the base aero configuration. And what we do is we do ride height sensitivity sweeps of that base configuration. So you can, you'll, and you'll see that that's basically done from run one through to run six. What we then do is that we re-baseline the car and then from run seven to nine is what we do is that we do the baseline rear wing, baseline rear wing plus two holes, baseline rear wing plus three holes. Now, obviously, in terms of the deltas you're going to apply, that is going to vary um, from, uh, that's going to vary from car to car. And just so that we can clear our, our nomenclature here, um, FRHO is basically our baseline front ride height. RRHO is our rear baseline rear ride height. And our D underscore rear ride height is our baseline rear ride height. And our D front ride is our delta front ride height. And the whole, so the whole idea of this is in terms of where those deltas that you're going to choose, they will vary from car to car. Rough rule of thumb, sports cars, open wheelers, you'd be looking at about anywhere from two to five mil. From uh, For touring cars, you will be looking at deltas in between five uh, to 10 mil. Now that will obviously vary from race car to race car, but there are some rough rules of thumb. Now, let's just say that we've gone through and we've collected all this data. What we need to do is that we would produce a monster file for each of our uh, uh, for each of those runs from r runs uh, one through to run nine. Now, what I've done is that um, I've gone through some old Formula Three legacy data um, that I've had, and you can see that what I've done here is that I've made monster files for all of those runs. Now, what we're going to be using is we're going to be using all of those uh, runs to determine our pitch sensitivity map, and then we're going to use that run to uh, then we're going to use that run information to um, go through and piece together basically what our arrow configure uh, what our arrow configurations are. Now, what I'd like to do 
is um, the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need a run log, and here's my run. Uh, and um, here is uh, uh, and here is uh, my run log right here. So run one through to run eleven was my picture uh, was uh, my right height sensitivity uh, uh, sweeps. Runs twelve through to run sixteen when I was going through the di uh, when we were going through the different um, uh, wing configurations. Now, let me just state from the outset that I've had to uh, uh, due to some confidentiality concerns, I've had to fudge some of the numbers here. So you will see some numbers that that look they're not far off, but they don't look completely right, and that's actually been done deliberately so um, uh, so that. Uh, uh, people watching this video without the best of intentions can uh, rub their hands together with glee and say, "Hey, hey we can start automatically applying this." Well, sorry, guys, life doesn't come that uh, uh, life doesn't come that easy. So, uh, uh, so what I uh, so what I like to do here is that I'll create a little Excel sheet where I'm going to go through and I'm going to plot out what I did. So, as you can see here, I've got my run number one. And I've base and I've also and I've listed my static front right height, my static rear right height, and what basically my wing configuration was. Now, what you'll see here that um, what I'd like to note here is the CLA average, CDA average, and error balance average. What's that? That's basically the uh, the CLA, CDA, and error balance average that chassis sim is going to spit back out at you. Now, what we need to do here is um, uh, what we'll do is that we go through and we've loaded in our um, our baseline arrow test car. We obviously set it to our base uh, uh, our baseline ride height, which is uh, our initial baseline ride height, 27 mil and uh, 46 mil. And what I'll do is I'll go to simulate aero modeling and I'll click here to add my monster import file. So we'll just, um, uh, for, we'll start off on our run one. We'll say plus one. Now, a really handy thing that I like to basically have a play around with is um, the advanced settings. What I like to do this for is if I've got some, say, some really, really noisy data that I need to filter out, I'll obviously take a quick look at the data, see where the data is bad, uh, where the data is bad, and I'll adjust these accordingly. For example, if I'm finding that the data below, say, 120 kilometers per hour is really bad, I'll set my threshold to 120k an hour. So that's only looking at data at 120k an hour plus. If I'm finding that I've got uh, that I've got a little bit of lateral G noise, um, what I'll do is I'll often look at the lateral G sensor. In this particular case, there was a bit of a bandwidth with the max lateral G, so I sent that to about 0.3 of a G. And you'll see here that I put my minimum longitudinal G at about 0.01. That was to make sure that I was only looking at either straight line or acceleration data. So I click on OK to commit that. I've imported my monster file. I'll click on OK. I'll let it run, and you can see here that um, this is basically my average. Uh, that this is basically my CLA average, my CDA, and my aero balance average. And typically, what I uh, and and what I'll do there is that I'll go to my um, aero. Uh, is that I will go to my aero run sheet, and I will basically make an appropriate record of uh, that there. Now, obviously, that wasn't quite uh, as I said. I've had to fudge the numbers here a little bit, but you can see here that I've gone through and done that from runs one through to runs 11. Now, typically as I'm going through, what I'll do is I'll have my folder with all this going, and you'll see that every time I generate an arrow analysis run, it'll call it back to arrow analysis results like that. And you can see that when I was generating the pitch sensitivity map, I went through and I renamed all these. And what I did was at the end of it, I put them together in a big file called AeroSweep results. And this basically contained everything. And to generate that, that's really easy. You just go to File, New, generate a new text file, and you have that open in Notepad. You have this open in Notepad. And all I'm doing is I'm just going Control-A, Control-C, and then I'll just open up my AeroSweep results file. And all I've got to do is paste it in there. It's as simple as that. Now. So, our first part in generating our aero map is to obviously generate our pitch sensitivity map. Now, once we've got that, you've got two, uh, uh, once you've got that, you've got two ways you can go down in generating a pitch sensitivity map. The way that I like to start is I'll go to my aero modeling, and you'll see here, generate aero map from aero toolbox results. What this is going to do is it's going to apply a second order surface fit to uh, the uh, original raw results. So let me just click in my arrow results and I'll go arrow sweep results. 
and I'll go through and I'll select my target locations where I want my CLA file, my CDA file, and my arrow balance. And I'll typically select, say, a resolution of about 10 by 10. You can go a little bit higher if you want, but just for the purposes of this exercise, I'll go 10 by 10. And you'll see here that um, to generate the error map, I just click on generate the error map tile, uh, uh, the error map, uh, and it says error map results written to file. Now, what I'll do is let's have a look at what these results look like. You'll see here the results it pits out, it, it's going to spit out is this is the column of front ride heights. This is the column of rear ride heights. So as we can see, this is basically what our results look like. Now, the reason I like to do it this way is it just gives me a rough idea just in case anything outrageously stupid hasn't happened. But more importantly, what it does is it tells me the ride height range that I'm... Uh, it tells me the ride height range, the results I'm operating in. So I'm going from, say, minus 5 mil to plus 30 mil at the front, and I'm going from 3.8 mil to about 35 mil at the rear. Now, what I can do is I've basically got a fork in the road. If I like the look of this, what I can do is I can get rid of this column here and I can get rid of this column here. And what I can do is I can save that as a text tab delimited file. And I can go into a click on the front wing. I'll go to downforce, drag and arrow balance, a quick start. And what I'll do is I can say that I'm gonna go 10 and 10 points, 10 and 10 points there. And I'll go minus five, 30, 3.8, and I'll just say take that up to about 36. Then I click on OK, and what that does is that's going to convert that into a Unity arrow map. And I've done that for drag, and it's done that for arrow balance. Now, I can go through, and obviously I can import, uh, I can go through, and I can import uh, that text file. We're going to do something just a little bit... Uh, now, if I was happy with uh, my second-order surface fit, I'd, be, uh, I'd probably be inclined to do that. And you know what? If I had a gun to my head, I would, uh, I'd almost be happy to go... Uh, I'd almost be happy to go with that. But to, go, uh, but to uh, quote a famous advertisement from where I'm from, wait, there's more. One of the things that you noticed I did when I was putting together my arrow results file, you'll see here that I was plotting my CLA averages as I was going, and I was plotting them against mean front ride height. What this does is this sort of forms the building block for me to use the arrow surface optimization feature. So if we have a look at that, and I go to click here to optimize arrow map, you'll see here I'll go to my arrow results file, which is my arrow sweep results file. You'll see here that I'm going to put in from minus five to plus 30. So that's my front ride, uh, uh, that'll be basically my front ride height um, surface file. Now, what what this is going to be using is a little technique called arrow surface um, map fitting, where we're basically, what we're doing is we're effectively breaking down the arrow map into slices of individual front ride heights, and we're curve fitting to that. Now, here's where, uh, now to quote the Joker from The Dark Knight, I'm going to show you a little bit of a magic trick. If we click on max CLA parameters, you can see here how I've gone, uh, did, uh, looking at my Excel sheet, you'll see here that around about run six and run nine, notice how I had a really big spike in the downfalls. What that shows me is that there's a sweet spot in this arrow map. And you can see here that occurred between about 12 and 10. So what I did was that I went through and I adjusted the front right height parameters to suit that. So I put in my max, um, my average CLA of about two. I noticed it dropped off, so I'll put that at about 1.9. And you'll notice that um, when I was really going, uh, when we were going through and um, had the rear really low, notice how the how the um, front, how the downforce really dropped off to about 1.66. So what I did was I took an educated guess and I uh, uh, put in 1.6 at 30. Now, just remember, bear in mind, this is an initial. Uh, this is an initial guess. You're going to let chassis sim go. Uh, you're going to let chassis sim go through and fill the details. Ditto for CDA parameters. There wasn't a big variation in the CDA, but what I've done is I've set it all at 0.72. Just looking at those average results. And what I did with the error balance parameters, and I noticed that they shifted a bit, but not a lot. So I just shifted the max values at 52. 
And I went through, looked at the rear ride height parameters. Yeah, about for looking at where the, the scale of the map was, um, notice that we had a maximum uh, rear ride height parameter about 35 mil. So I'm going to keep the parameters at about 30 mil. And I'll let it set a, a, a search in the plus or minus 10 mil range of that 30 mil. And I did that for a basically... Or, uh, I basically did that for all of the maps. So what we're doing is we're using the aero surface to take an initial, uh, we're putting in some initial guesses to help chassis sim fill in the blanks. And when we're ready, we click here to optimize the surface map. We click on OK. And then we click on one to activate that. Um, yes, we're going to activate, uh, that we're going to run this feature. We're going to click on OK. And uh, uh, we're uh, going to uh, click on OK, and chassis sim is going to uh, is that um, uh, is uh, we're going to click on OK, and you'll see that chassis sim is now going to go and do uh, 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 the chassis sim is now going to go off and do its thing. So go away, grab a cup, uh, grab a cup of coffee, and you can come back. And just to show what um, it's uh, what the output's going to initially look like, you'll be presented with something like this when you're done. And to show you what uh, the output of this looks like, if we go into our aero modeling results, you'll see here's our aero balance table. Here's our CDA table. And here's our CLA table. Uh, and um, here's our CLA table. Now, I've already done this previously. And so to import that, all you've got to do is click on the front wing, go to edit downforce, go to import text file. We'll click on CLA table. And that imports your CLA results. Now, just to show you what this looks like, I've actually already done this previously, and this is basically pretty much what it uh, uh, this is pretty much what it looks like. So, as you can see, the great news is we, it's taken our initial guess, and what it's done is it's basically massaged it and put it in, so we can really get the nuances of that arrow map. So that's actually a really, really power. Uh, that's actually a really, really powerful feature. Now, when I'm done with that map, what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll look for the maximum value of CLA, CDA, and what I'll do is I'll go to my um, Excel sheet here, and you'll notice here that I've actually made a record of what they are. You're wondering what's that for? That's going to be for two reasons. Number one. That's going to be the thing I'm going to apply here for our max CLA and CDA. The other thing that's going to form the basis of is when I go through and I run through my different wing configure uh, the, for my different wing configurations, and these wing configurations were much lower downforce levels than what they were for our baseline configuration. You can see here that what I'm doing is I'm going to compare the average value here to the average value there, and I'm just going to scale that to um uh, to uh, to uh, to come up with what the appropriate setting is for uh, what I do when I apply the rear wing and I need to go through and apply that particular wing setting that's all there is to it to going through and then going through and categorizing the uh, uh, for categorizing these holes so that's it so as you can see Creating uh, aero maps and chassis sim isn't hocus pocus. It's just a matter of going through and going through some very, very deliberate action steps. It starts with uh, it's the, uh, what it does is it starts with coming together with a base program. Once you've done with that base program, we go uh, once you've done with that base pro uh, once you've done with that base program, we then go through here and look through all our particular aero uh, and go through all our particular aero modeling uh, uh, we go through all our particular aero modeling results and we generate monster files we go through one by one and we uh, for the ride height sensitivity sweeps we use the aero modeling toolbox to come up with those all of those ride height sweeps and we combine them in a uh, si uh, in a um, uh, single big uh, in a single big file then what we do, and obviously as we're going through, we're going through and we're making a record of um, what the averages are. Once we've done that, we then generate uh, the aero. Uh, we then generate uh, the uh, ride height sensitivity map. Once we've got generated the ride height sensitivity map, we note what our CLA max, our CDA max is, and uh, we also note what our aero uh, and uh, we also have a look at what our aero balance reference is, and then. We go through and compare our um, wing sweeps with our baseline, uh, our baseline sweeps at the equivalent ride heights. And from that, we can come through with the values that we need to input for CLA max, CDA max, and arrow balance offset 
for our uh, uh, for our different wing settings. That's it. What we've just described here is the is everything you're going to need to do to generate an aero map and chassis sim. But look, don't take my uh, uh, but look, don't take my word for it. Go through. Uh, for those of you who are members of the Chassis Sim community, go through and do this yourself. And for those of you who are not members of Chassis Sim community, register for the professional online uh, register for the professional online simulation. Or if you're a professional race team looking for the full version of Chassis Sim, uh, register for a demo and find for yourself just what a powerful tool Chassis Sim can be to generate your own arrow maps from race data.